Hello and welcome to another episode of the How to Create VR tutorial series, where you learn by watching other VR and AR professionals create the magic. I'm Marcelo Lewin, a VR and AR developer, evangelist, and the guy behind HowToCreateVR.com. My guests today are Rolf Illenberger, the founder and CEO of Beyond. Prior to Beyond, Rolf was the managing director of Pro Siebensat 1, Europe's largest TV broadcasting network. Rolf will be assisted today by his CTO, Diego Montoya. Today, we'll see how you can create virtual tours using Beyond. But before we get started, if you enjoy this video, please give it a thumbs up and remember to subscribe to my channel. It will only take you a second, but it will really help me tremendously so that I can continue providing you these kinds of tutorials on a weekly basis. All right, now that that's out of the way, Rolf and Diego, welcome to the tutorial. Hi, Marcelo. Great to be on your show. Thanks for the opportunity. You're welcome. I'm glad to have you here. And Diego, you're online as well, right? Yeah, I'm here. Thank you also for the invitation. I'm happy to show you about Beyond. So why don't we start out really quickly, Rolf, and then you, Diego, just give a quick background of your technical and VR background. I was a managing director at ProSevens at One. It's probably not that well known in the US, but it's uh, actually Europe's largest uh, TV broadcasting network based out of Munich in Germany. And I headed the digital division when I saw virtual reality coming up back in 2016. By that time, I wanted to have a platform that could deliver entertainment experiences, entertainment content in VR. So my basic idea by that time was having really VR-based TV-like shows. And I was actually looking for a technology partner that would help me and allow me to deliver this vision. And so I was uh, looking basically all around the globe for a technology partner that's able to uh, provide such a platform, such a distribution platform. And by that time, couldn't really find one. So that was when we started to look at a technology partner that would be interested in creating and building such a platform together with us, which we then found in a company based here in Munich, where Diego was already CTO by that time. And we outlined the platform together. And this is what today is at the market with Vyond. And we're going to get into Beyond in a second. So what about you, Diego? What's your background? You're obviously CTO of the company. But prior to that, what did you do? I started in, in Germany and ended up uh, working for this company that Rolf just mentioned. I started there five years ago as a developer. Well, working on different projects in augmented reality and virtual reality. And when Rolf came uh, for the collaboration with Reflect about this platform, I had already done some VR projects, uh, some of them including 360. And that's where this idea started to get shaped, right? And we started then working on that project around 2015, beginning of 2016. I worked and led the engineering efforts and the product development for two years inside of Reflect. Well, the company decided to make a spin-off, and that's where uh, Rolf and I co-founded uh, Beyond, and I became the CTO by the beginning of this year and working since then. So since the beginning, the very beginning of the product till now the spin-off and new company evolved in the products and the technical side, especially and now CTO. Well, we're going to do a overview of Beyond here. So VR developers and creators can check out the different tools available out there to create these virtual tours. So why don't you either roll for Diego, whoever's going to take over, get start by giving us a sort of an overview of the interface here. What are we looking at? When we started to create this platform, our vision was to create a tool that makes it easy for people to enter the VR world. So that was the basic idea and essentially the platform that we created and the tool that we created is a tool that gives um, provides a lot of creative, creative freedom to the users so they can actually use the tool and create their VR experiences and bring their VR experiences to life. So that's the basic idea of, of our app and our platform. And we're going to now jump in and um, show you the, or explain to you the interface of the platform and uh, create a little demo project to explain how the platform and the authoring tool is actually working. So on the top left of the authoring tool, you have the preview window where you see your 360 footage and we're going to start creating a little demo project while I'm while I'm speaking so you can actually see the tool how it's working. On the bottom left, this is what we call the storytelling or the storylining window. 
that is where you create the different 360 worlds or you uh, add the interactivity and you add kind of the storyline that you want to take the user through in your uh, VR experience. And on the right of the screen, you have the properties windows. We're going to dive into more details later. Here you really create the interactivity, you add time events, and you modify all the specifications of videos and pictures that you're using uh, within the VR experience. Very cool. So once you're in here, you start by what? Importing some footage? Is that the first step? Yes, exactly. So as we will now show while I'm talking is how you actually create a very basic experience. So the first step is you create what we call nodes. You see these circles in the bottom left window of the authoring tool. And each of these circles now represents a 360 image or a 360 video. So our tool can handle any kind of uh, 360 footage that you have available. In this case, we just use some basic 360 material that we have from a prior shooting. So these, e each of these nodes are basically scenes, right? Each of these nodes are actually scenes? Exactly. You could say they are scenes. And, and what's the uh, limit that you can support on the 360 video? Can you do 4K, 8K? Is there a, a, a limit on the resolution? Um, we limit it to 4K at this point in time. Okay. Is that because of distribution or why is the, why is the limit 4K? Because it seems like most apps are limiting it at 4K. Or is it because of the playback? Like, for example, the Oculus Go can't play anything over 4K anyway. Yeah, that's the main reason, actually. The idea of all... Uh, one, one, there's one important thing also to say is that the experiences that you create with the authoring tool, like we are showing it now, can also be distributed and made publicly available via our platform. And we're going to show that in a second but in order to ensure um, compatibility with the most devices, you need to limit the resolution at some point to ensure that it that the experiences run smoothly on all possible devices. Right. So that's why we decided at this point in time to limit to 4K, as you just said, the Oculus Go being one limiting factor here. Got it. Okay, makes sense. Okay, so now what we've done is we put an image into the first, a 360 image into the first node or scene, as you call it. And we're going to do a second image in the second node. While you do that, you have a high-resolution media that's optional. What does that mean? Does it mean that you can have both, like, a, let's say, an HD and a 4K or... Exactly. That's so that exactly way it depends on the device that can pick the device or your app on the device will pick the, the most appropriate one? Absolutely. We have a content management system as the core of our VR platform. So the authoring tool is kind of the input device to our content management system. And our content management system has a technology that detects the quality of the transmission between a device and our content management system or the device itself and the quality uh, of the device. So is it an Android phone or is it an Oculus Go? And depending on the device and on the quality of this transmission, our content management system distributes the proper right, quality. Right, the proper the quality device. one. Yep, yep, that makes sense. Cool. So, and, and what we found is that a lot of creatives would like to provide the different resolutions themselves. So that's why we offer the option to provide two different quality right. levels. Yep, makes sense. Okay, so now we created two nodes with 360 image images, uh, like the node on the left and the node in the middle. And the node on the right is a 360 video. So there's just some general content that we're using here. Could be any kind of 360 footage. And what we're doing now is we are connecting these nodes or these scenes with these little arrows, which represent the logical connections between these scenes in the storytelling of your experience. So does that mean when you connect them like that, that if you don't add any hotspots to in the middle of video to switch, at the end of the play, it'll automatically go to the next one? No, you can do this in a, in a video. So if we go to the video, you have this option, end of video action. That is right now I do nothing. So in a video, we could add uh, something like that. I so see. we can loop the video or we can trigger a transition. So trigger, triggering a transition is what we call moving from one node or one scene to the other node. So that in a video content, you could do this. 
for uh, image, it doesn't doesn't make sense. So we, we don't have this option, what happens at the end. What we do have for image, though, is what we call time events. So within any 360 image, you could set a time event, like a, a 60 seconds or something, and then you could trigger a transition. So that would mean after a certain uh, period of time, you're taken to the next scene. Or, or something else, like do an audio, whatever. Can you do a time event with videos? Yeah, you, you can do the same. You so can you can go inside of the video, and you can also add a time event. Got it. Yeah. Question on the video, on the transition or the end transition or even in the timed events, when you trigger a transition to go to the next scene or a particular scene, can you have it, if that scene that you're going to is a, is a video, can you have it start at a particular time of the video or does it always start at the beginning? It always, it always starts at the beginning. In general, yes, but what you can do is uh, keep the node time. So for example, if you have two videos that run parallelly, you can select in transition and check the box to keep the no time. That means if you leave the first node at second 10, for example, then you enter the second node at the same time, at second 10. So for example, if you're watching a single event from different perspectives, it will work in parallel. So you can go from one to the other without going back in time. So oh, say. that's very cool. Okay, and, and it's only playing one at a time, right? So you're not really streaming two videos. All it's doing is when you trigger the transition, you're going specifically to that same exact time. Exactly. Okay, makes sense. Cool. Right. So now that we connected the different scenes or nodes with these arrows, we will now add the interactivity. So that is done by clicking on what we call a trigger point. Uh, you can see that now in the middle of the preview window, and you can actually very easily drag and drop this trigger point around within the content. You can, on the right-hand side, set different properties like the distance to the user and uh, also the scale of the element. And of course, you can give that a custom design. So again, you can upload, you can use any, any kind of individual a navigation sign, text box, picture, a video, whatever that might be. So in this case, we'll just add a navigation sign and resize it so it fits with the door here. And now the important thing is to set the interaction, what's actually happening when you click this element. So you again do this in the right-hand side. So um, we support different interaction types. This could be select, gaze in or gaze out. In this case, we do a select event, so the user clicks on it, or if you use it in a head-mounted device, then it's all navigated by your view. So you would have a, a little cross in the middle of your view, and with that, you can activate this trigger point. A question about the HMD on that. So if you say select and you have a little cross, do you press a trigger or is it by gaze? It's actually... if. It, it's by, it's, is it gaze? Yes, yeah, gaze. Yeah, it's gaze, so it's always gaze. So there's no trigger yet for like, let's say the Oculus Go or if you have a Rift or any of that stuff. Oh, actually, in the, um, in the gear, you can shortcut it. So if you don't want to wait for the second by operating it by gaze, then you look at it and then you can tap. So it's the usual interaction that people know from Oculus Gear. Right, right. Something Gear, sorry. It's by tapping on the side. And also, for example, in Daydream, you can actually point and click on the controller. I see. Are you guys going to do any kind of uh, interaction where you tri we use the triggers for uh, the other devices? Do you see that coming in the future? Yes, definitely. I mean, we're uh, thinking about how to expand the, the interactions and uh, how to do it in, a, in the most efficient way for each platform. And we're seeing, so we're going to give more uh, extended support for controllers, including the Oculus Go controller or Gear VR controller. And well, now that you mentioned it, actually, if you look with the gaze or with the middle of the gaze and also press the trigger of the Oculus Go, it also shortcuts it, so it's a little bit faster. It's not exactly pointed and click, but that's also coming in the future. So for the hotspot, can you, you press the button, which button did you press to get the hotspot in? The, the, the add a trigger point, so that's on the bottom left of our top left preview window. That's always where you start when you add an interaction to an image or a video. And this kind of interaction, and that's what we're going to show now, is can be different things. So in this case, it's a 2D image, a navigation symbol that's activated when you spin it selected. And you have different options as for the interactivity that you can 
trigger by this element. So you can either play a sound, stop a sound, you can trigger a transition, which means changing to another node. You can show and hide interactive elements. So interactive elements are other elements within this 360 environment that have a function. You can, can you give an it. example of that? What do you mean by that? Um, you don't have to show it, but just give an example of what you mean by interactive element. It's an, it's an, it's an element that triggers, that, that has another action associated. So we're going to show that later in a more sophisticated okay. experience. Perfect. It can be a symbol that opens an, an information box, for instance, or it can be an element that plays a sound. No 3D objects yet, right? Support it? Like bringing in 3D objects or anything like that? No 3D objects, but what you can do is you can add stereo images, both for the 360 environment as for the interactive elements. So they can also have a 3D effect. I see. Okay. And the start video action there that will play a flat video, I'm assuming, and you can position it wherever you want? Exactly. Perfect. Start video, stop video. And then we have also show and hide interactive elements as other interactive options. In this case, what we're going to do is what we call trigger a, trigger a transition. So when you click on it, you'll be taken to the next node. Right? And obviously, you can, in this case, we only have one transition for each node, but this can be in, indefinite transition. So from one node, you could, for instance, have a node that's a menu to an experience where you have several options to, to where the user can choose from, go to the left, go to the right, go ahead, like for instance, and then you add more of these arrows and more of these transitions. So very, very flexible here. So let's say I have a home button that I want to put in every scene. Do I have to add that hotspot in every scene, which of course could be a major pain if I want to change where that goes later, or can I create a hotspot that's global and then it's added in every scene automatically? Well, you can add global hotspots. That's when you click on the background or click on the symbol here. And you see that the environment has little anchors to it. That means components there are global. So I can add an interactive element here and it will be visible throughout the whole experience. I can use it, for example, to add, add music in the background that I can hear throughout the whole experience or to show some information that has to show sample after one minute, regardless of where I find myself in the experience. So this is possible. What is not exactly possible is to trigger a transition from these global components, but that's something we're looking to add in the next versions, in the rest releases. I see. But I could here put this. So this could be my navigation, basically, where I can put a home button, I can put a, maybe a restart, and it would always go to the same place for everybody, wh whatever I decide to make it interactive here, uh, go to, but it would appear in every scene. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I'm assuming you can't overwrite it in a particular scene, meaning like don't show the global here. Yeah, I said before, this is not something is possible at the moment to okay. interact between the global components and the local components, so to say, the, the local, local uh, uh, interactive elements and the global interactive elements, but something we're looking into and the best way to, to add it. So it's going to be possible to do some kind of interaction between the two. So for example, to override it, hide it or right. deactivate it in uh, specific nodes and make the, the creation of the experience much more efficient. So Yeah, yeah. No, but just having this global thing is actually a cool thing because it saves a lot of work. If you have 20 scenes and you want a home button, you don't want to put it in every scene. Exactly. Yes. And the one thing that's also oftentimes used is like background music. So you have music that's playing throughout a whole experience and doesn't start over and over again when you switch to scenes. Right, right. That makes sense. Very cool. Right, so we added one transition in the first node, and we're going to do the same thing in the second node. And in this case, if it makes sense or not, we're going to add a navigation point that will take you to the third node, which in this case is a helicopter flight, but just for the sake of the preview. We're going to do this if the user is to enter the bathroom in this case. He's not going to take him to the bathroom, but to a helicopter video. And we just simply add a navigation point here. We again add the interaction event. So select and trigger transition. And now we're actually good to go. So this is a very simple experience that we created here, consisting out of two 360 images and one 360 video. And we can now go ahead in the workflow and show you how you can actually easily preview this experience on your VR device that you're using. Quick question before you do that. You can, and we'll let it uh, run on the background there, but you can have, I'm assuming, multiple 
actions because I saw the plus. I'm assuming you can add multiple actions. So not just exit, but you can play a sound, do a variety of things prior to exiting. Oh, you're going to see that in a second when we show a more advanced experience. Perfect. That on at one interaction point, you can have four, five, six I see. different interactions that are triggered when this interaction point is clicked. Yep. And they can affect any interactive elements. So they, the actions don't only fall on itself. They can also fall on other interactive elements. So one interactive element can hide several others or show several others. Or you can chain the effect so you can activate one after the other, after the other, after the other to be sure that a user is following a certain series of events, for example. Or you can also wait until something happens so that you go to the next video. Do so a small you can run in parallel or sequential to each other. Yeah, for example. Yeah, cool, cool. Okay, now we rendered the uh, experience and we have it ready as a preview. So this is actually... The two devices, so the device that you created the experience on, which is either a Mac or a, a PC, we have the offering tool available for both ecosystems. You create the experience and your VR device, be it in this case it's a mobile phone, an, an iPhone, but it can also be an Oculus. What you need is the Beyond app installed, which is of course free to download. You can just open the Beyond app and it'll show the laptop that the experience was created with. You click it, and it's gonna instantly download the experience that you created. So what you can see now is what I see on my mobile screen. So this is like the bureau view, and you see these little watermarks in the back showing beyond. We included that because this is just a preview mode and not intended to be used in a business situation, but you can I'm clicking on this navigation symbol now, and now I'm entering the bathroom, which takes me to this image. That's right, you just have to look up. Oh, yeah. Uh, right, right. There. right. So, there. so right now what happened was, that's an interesting bathroom you have there with a helicopter. Um, what, what you're doing, basically, you are interacting with the phone itself and then clicking with your finger, I guess, the, the hot points. I'm clicking with my fingers. That's what exactly what I did. So we have a bureau mute. That's when I move. We can switch to the finger mode. So now I'm, I'm moving it with my finger. And you can obviously also switch to the VR mode that you then could put in a card mode. Obviously, if you're using it, the preview mode with an Oculus Go, you would only have this this way of looking at so it, it works the same way on an Oculus Go. You install our Beyond app and when you create an experience, the Beyond app on your Oculus Go would instantly find the new experience that you created and you would be able to preview it uh, right away. I see. Very cool. Okay, so next thing is a more advanced experience, um, of, which is basically a walk through an apartment, and we can show some of the more advanced features or the advanced creations here. So if you look around in this room, you can see that there are a lot of objects. So when you would be to enter this room in the actual live version of this experience, it would be entirely empty, and you are able to add all of these elements while in the VR experience. And as you've just seen, this is done very, very easily. So basically what we just show you is that you take a picture of this room with the different elements in, in shown, and then you can simply cut out some of these elements with, say, Photoshop or other tools, and then add them as interactive elements to this room and to the experience here. So you can sh see that here, this is like the open cupboard, right? And um, the way it's done for the user is if the user clicks on a plus symbol, the more you have different interaction events happening when the user clicks on this symbol. In this case, the user clicks on the plus and it hides the plus symbol. It's so that's the first interaction that's happening when he clicks the plus. The second thing is it shows the, the cupboard. The third interaction is it shows the minus symbol. So the user can then later on do the whole thing in reverse and get back to a room without a cupboard. And the two remaining interactions are 
activating and deactivating the interactive element. So you make sure that when the user clicks on the plus, the plus is deactivated and the minus is activated and vice versa. So that's kind of the very basic, if you want programming, that you need when using Beyond and when, when creating some kind of an advanced experience here. And just by using these very simple advanced features, you can create very sophisticated experiences with a lot of interaction. Can you do something similar with video? This is an image, obviously, but can you do something similar with uh, video where you add these kind of interactive elements? I'm assuming, yeah. Yes. You can, anything you can see here, you can also do in the video. The, the only issue that I see is that uh, in a video that moves, you can't animate these elements to move along with the video, right? They, they would be in that place. So if the video pans, let's, let's say, then the interactive element will always be at that location, correct? Yeah, that's correct. They, they will stay there, but still, well, if you can place it and, and put a size corresponding are big enough so you can have a little bit of room of play. Like, for example, we had some people that uh, created a, also like a tour inside of an apartment and they place virtual hostess in a video and it walked around a little bit too and that worked pretty well with the, with the video. So it's possible. Like a green screen kind of hostess? Exactly. I see. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. So very cool. All right. That's that's a pretty good overview. And then you publish this and then you obviously... Now, let's talk real quick because we're almost out of time here. But you can, once right. you publish, you showed how we can preview it. Once you publish it, as my understanding is there's two options. One is to distribute it through your distribution network. And is the other one to be able to download it? Can I download this as an HTML5 version that I can just post on a website? Or does it have to go through your distribution network? No, right now we're only offering a distribution via our network. So the experiences are hosted in our cloud and are always distributed via our cloud. This has to do with, we want to ensure the user experience with what we talked about earlier. We have different quality levels. We provide this experience for the different devices, for the different iOSs, uh, or the or different operating systems. And that's why we always distribute via our network. What we do have is web player on a web page, but it will still be distributed our, over our network. I see. So you have sort of some sort of uh, embed code or something, basically. Yes. So that means the user, and let's not get into pricing or anything like that. Don't worry about that because pricing can always change a year from now and the video will still be around. So, but basically it's a subscription model that people would, are they paying for the tool or are they really playing for the distribution? They're only playing for the distribution. The tool that we showed here is entirely for free. Anyone can download it and can start getting creative today. Even the preview function that we just showed is totally free of charge. You will only need a license when you actually publish an experience and make it publicly available. And right. As you said, we have different options and we'll try to cater any uh, need and requirements of our clients here. Without getting into specifics on the pricing, but do you charge per view or is it more a fixed cost or what's... what's The basic difference in the pricing is if you want to distribute via our app, which is cheaper entry, uh, or if you want to have a white label app, obviously... We're, we're oh, I see. Your own, yeah, like your exactly. own branded app versus your app itself. Most, most, most of our clients actually want their own white label app. So we are able to generate a white label app for iOS, Android, and Oculus very easily, where Beyond is then not shown anywhere. So most of our clients, if they use it for marketing purposes, decide to have their own white label app. And it's very easy, can be very easily done with our platform. Uh, that affects the pricing, obviously. So right. generating a white label app and operating it is more costly than having right. it right. as an app. And, and so there, they would be their XYZ app that can host as many experiences as they want to host. Uh, ab absolutely. We, we offer two different options for apps. Uh, the one is what we call a one experience app. So you open the app and you would and find yourself right. immediately in a VR environment. The, uh, the other one is kind of a library, much as you know from, from other um, video on demand platforms, basically. Media companies use that, for instance where you could have various VR experiences which are not exactly related to each other in a, and you offer them in a kind of a library style to your clients. Right, right. For example, if you're a real estate company and you have multiple yes. homes or, yeah. Exactly, yeah. multiple homes. If you're a media company or 
if you're a tourism provider or a hotel chain or something. Right. So wherever yeah. it is. So our, our platform is particularly strong when we when you have to deal with a lot of VR content, when you have to deal with VR content that needs to be updated in real time, that needs to be delivered in a best user experience, basically on a global scale. So that's where our platform really has strength. Yep, makes sense. All right, well, Rolf, Diego, I really want to thank you for showing us your tool today. I really appreciate your time. Um, maybe you can give a real quick, and I mean quick because we're really out of time, but a real quick, what, what does the future hold for, I mean, are you guys going to add like three objects or maybe grabbing interactivity? I mean, you know, not not full unity, you know, flexibility, but are you guys, what what's the future for Beyond and, and um, making... VR creation easier for people that are not Unity developers. What, what, do, what do you guys have in your roadmap that you can share? Well, we have, we have quite a lot of things in, your, in, in our roadmap and also the stuff that you already mentioned. But the challenge for that we see actually in the market these days is to lower the hurdle for people that haven't had any, inter, any touch points with VR yet, uh, but are simply curious. To, to lower this hurdle even further. So there's a lot in, in UX improvements. There's a lot of uh, making it even easier for, you know, for real estate agents, for hotel owners and stuff to enter this kind of uh, medium and to start getting creative here. In my personal opinion, that's even more critical these days than offering this feature and that feature and even more advanced features to, to the platform. Sounds good. I personally want more features, but I'm a selfish kind of guy, so that's okay. <laughs> um, I'm me, myself on the technical side. Yes, we also add uh, uh, more advanced features, and 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 we all know Unity and, and and what kind of things we can offer. And we're not going completely that direction. Makes no sense because we we want to do something that is easy to use and uh, to democratize a little bit the production of VR content. But we're definitely gonna add some, some some features like, for example, animation or better usage of the controllers, or uh, these global interactions. Uh, there's uh, things that are gonna come little by little with the next uh, uh, releases as time goes on. Excellent. Uh, so definitely, it's gonna gonna get better there too. Yep. Perfect. All right, well, Rolf and Diego, I really really appreciate your time. Thanks for sharing how this tool works and your knowledge and everything else. Real quick, either of you, if you want to give a URL for people to find out more information, if you want to give your Twitter, your email, whatever you like. You'll, you'll, you'll find any information regarding Beyond on our webpage, which is www.beyond.io. We have a great blog with a lot of additional information, tutorial videos on YouTube, on our YouTube channel, on the Beyond YouTube channel as well. And uh, obviously, we also have a Facebook and Twitter page on, on the name Beyond. So follow us there. Happy to provide you with more information and reach out to us on any of these channels if you have further questions or want to discuss VR. Excellent. Well, Rolf and Diego, thank you. And to the rest of you, I'm glad you were here with us. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and remember to subscribe to my channel. It will only take you a second, but it will really help me tremendously so that I can continue providing you these kinds of tutorials on a weekly basis. If you are ever in the Southern California area, we have a monthly meetup with lots of great VR and AR presentations. You can join or RSVP for our next meetup at howtocreatevr.com slash meetup. Finally, if you are interested in learning more about how to create VR, AR, and MR experiences, please visit howtocreatevr.com. So until the next episode, I'm Marcelo Lewin. Cheers, everyone.